have to say that he looked as though he was back to his form. The 2004 Olympic champion is the 2012. Tremendous run here by Sanchez, all the way, concentrating to the line, not, not looking around, not seeing where anyone else is, not worried about that. Our first speaker is a 1997 graduate of Lawrence High School. He is uh, working in a variety of charitable uh, uh, occupations right now. Most recently, he's worked with Harvard University and other nonprofits in the medical field. And it's continuous proof that people, are, people from Lawrence are successful. When you work hard, good things will happen. So I'd like to introduce Daryl Collado. He's a 1997 graduate of Lawrence High School, and he can also tell you about his story uh, of how he worked hard and is in the process of achieving all of his goals. And he's one of the people responsible for helping bringing our special guest to Lawrence. Let's give him a nice round of applause, please. Thank you. Lawrence High School. Come on. It feels so good to be home. Um, I'm a 1997 graduate of Lawrence High School. Uh, I was born and raised in the Beacon Projects in Lawrence, in South Lawrence, off of Andover Street. Um, my journey really uh, started here at LHS, at the old high school. This is a beautiful building. This is the first time I've had the pleasure of, of uh, being in this building. And so just a little bit about myself. I am, again, born and raised in Lawrence. Uh, after Lawrence High School, I completed a, a PG year at Phillips Andover. After Andover, I was the first in my family of seven to graduate from college, UMass uh, Amherst, political science and Spanish. I moved to Washington, D.C. I worked for America's Most Wanted. Anyone ever heard of America's Most Wanted? Uh, the TV show on Fox, uh, we did that. I have a master's from Georgetown in business uh, focused on leadership. And for the last five and a half years, I've run a leadership program at Harvard entitled Latino Leadership Initiative. So we would work with a lot of Latino students from all across the country in teaching leadership skill sets. I'm, uh, I have a new position now, I've transitioned recently. I run Milagros Para Niños at Boston Children's Hospital. So I'm responsible for fundraising for Latino and Portuguese patients at Boston Children's Hospital, top pediatric hospital in the world, uh, where over 30% of our patient population are Latino. I've dedicated my entire life to service of others because I do feel that being from Lawrence and having mentors, uh, Mr. Richard Gorham, I don't know if he's here, but he was a big mentor when I was at Lawrence High School, helped me um, go to Andover, uh, and you know the rest is really history. But I'm here because I do believe in the notion that when you take the elevator up in life, you should always send it back down to others to follow. When I was at Harvard, I helped start the um, Harvard Dominican Student Association three years ago um, because I saw that uh, students of Dominican descent at Harvard could really use uh, uh, mentorship. As a result of that work, this weekend we are, Harvard University is hosting the eighth annual National Dominican Student Conference with over 700 students from all across the country, including, believe, uh, Dominicans in Utah and in Korea that are going to be in attendance at our conference. As a result of our conference, we have some amazing speakers, one of which you will hear today, two-time Olympic gold medalist uh, Felix Sanchez. But before we get to Felix, um, I, I really felt that it was really important to also highlight academics. Many of us are not going to be you know, privileged with the opportunity to be, you know, uh, a, a, an Olympian, a David Ortiz, for example. So my way out of, for, um, you know, for a better way for my family was academics. I have a young man here that he's going to share his story, and I think it's extremely important. His name is Alex Diaz. He's of Dominican and Cuban descent from Union City, New Jersey. He's someone whom I met his second year at Harvard College. Alex uh, will be graduating from Harvard in May. He just recently won the Rhodes Scholarship and the Marshall Scholarship, which, is, which are two of the most prestigious uh, scholarships in the world. Alex is also someone 
Union City is extremely similar to Lawrence. So he's someone that has faced the same adversities as you all, and he has just been accepted into Harvard Law School. He's a shining star in all of our communities. Uh, you'll be hearing from Felix, but I think it's extremely important that you hear from someone uh, in our community, an up-and-comer, and please help me welcome Harvard Senior Rhodes Scholar, Alex Diaz. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? Como estamos, como estamos? Everyone good? Yeah? <laughs> Um, so I'm, I'm going to try not to bore you guys. Uh, as Dario said, I'm from Union City, New Jersey, uh, predominantly Dominican, Cuban uh, area. I mean, I grew up in the projects. I grew up, you know, s similar to a lot of your backgrounds. Um, so I, I know what you guys go through every day, in and out. I grew up not having food to eat. I grew up trying to hustle to make money on the side so I could live. I know what you guys go through. I was in your shoes not that long ago. And I guess the, the main message I'm trying to say is that if I can make it, y'all can make it. Ustedes pueden. You just got to work. It's all about hard work. Um, one of my role models, uh, someone I look up to a lot is Michael Jordan. And he has a quote that says, uh, some want it to happen, some wish it would happen, others make it happen. And that's the key. Make it happen. No excuses. Work hard. It's nothing more special than that. All it takes is hard work. You have to be known for your hard work. You have to be known as the hardest worker. You have to outshine everybody by 10 times because of your hard work. And especially as a Latino, you got to work extra hard. You got to work extra hard to get what you got, to get what you need. So I'm going to tell you a couple of things that helped me along the way uh, to be where I am today. Uh, one, first and foremost, you got to represent. No matter where you are, you got to represent. Not only represent yourself, represent your family, but also represent Latinos across the country. I mean, some people look at that as a burden. Every action you take is a reflection of you, your family, and Latinos. Most other people don't have to worry about that. So you got to be extra aware that everything you do is a reflection of us, of all of us. So be conscious of that. Know that. Don't put, you know, ridiculous things up on social media because it's not about you anymore. It's about something a lot bigger than you. It's about us. It's about our future. It's about your kids, about our grandkids. We work way too hard to let it slip now. Another thing that helped me, or that I had to learn across, along the way, is to watch your crew, who you hang out with, who are your closest friends. That matters. You know who your friends are. You don't want to hang around with the people that are doing the bad stuff. Come on, it's that, it's that simple. Hang around with the people that are gonna be the most positive, and they're gonna do what they can for your future. And I guess one last thing I'll say is, just be self-confident. You have, to, you have to walk in con la confianza that, that you belong at the table. Because you do. Your voices need to be heard. And that's one thing that's, that's separated me from a lot of other people is that I just walk in with the swag and, and the confidence that I know I belong. And with all that and hard work, you can, you can accomplish all your dreams. Uh, I'll be here after for you guys to talk. Um, but without further ado, I, you, all, you guys are all here to hear Felix. So this guy needs no introduction, but please come, please help me in welcoming the two-time Olympic gold medalist de, la, de Nueva Patria de la República Dominicana, Felix Sanchez.
Bueno, ya yo siento el calor. Porque ese frío, man, I'm, it's a lot, lot colder from, definitely from Los Angeles. A lot colder than the Dominican Republic. I don't know how you guys do it. I think this is cold. This is good leading into summer for most of you guys. Um, it's only 40 degrees. I, I don't even think it gets that cold in the Dominican Republic, and I know it doesn't get that cold in Los Angeles. Man. Pero, me dijeron. Me dijeron que había mucho, mucho niño, mucho carajito, pero espérate, no tanto. ¿Y esa bulla? I bet you, I bet you never thought you guys would be in front of a two-time Olympic gold medalist. Because I never thought I would be there. A lot of people on the way, coaches, my mother, tu sabes, tu mamá siempre te va a apoyar. They go, oh, tu puedes, tu vas a llegar. And I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> no one's ever done it, mom. <laughs> um, but one thing my grandmother told me, she said, remember, there's always have to be a, there always has to be a first. Um, my story starts when I was born in um, New York City, Dominican parents. My father was a player. So my mom got tired of that. He had to go to the most lejos possible, to San Diego. And Ahí me crié con mi abuela y mi mamá. Lejísimo de todo el mundo. Lejísimo de dominicanidad. A los únicos latinos que estaban allá los mexicanos. De cuando vieron un dominicano, así, de este color, con un apellido Sánchez. Pero, what part of Mexico are you from? <laughs> like, no, I'm Dominican. But what's that? That's like Puerto Rican? No, 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 no. No. <laughs> um, but that was a, a daily struggle for me, mainly because we moved a lot. We moved a lot, we moved around from city to city. Um, and it was difficult meeting new friends, going over the, yeah, I'm not Mexican, yeah, I'm not black and white, I'm not mixed, I'm Latin, I'm Dominican. Over and over and over and over again. Um, and I, it had an effect on me. I shied away from speaking Spanish. Um, I didn't have any Spanish friends. En la casa hablamos español nada más, pero en la calle, en, en la escuela, con la mitad, only English. Um, and that was difficult for me because I had no connection to my Dominican race and my Dominican culture outside of home. Unlike you guys, you guys are privileged to have so many Dominicans alrededor del tele. They told me, I didn't know this, I didn't know this, and you learn something new every day, they say. This is the second most Dominican populated city in the United States outside of Washington Heights. That's amazing. Ustedes le gustan su frío. Que no, que no, parece. So I started playing baseball. My dream was to be the next Dominican baseball player. Of course. That's all I saw, that's all I thought existed. Um, that didn't last very long. I did it in jun uh, Little League, went to middle school, junior high school, first year of high school. For what reason? I listened to my friend, 
And he said, come out with the wrestling team. I'm like, all right, cool. And let me tell you, you think I'm small now. I was about this tall, 100 pounds. And one of those singlets, you didn't want to see that. I was like, who am I? You had the head, the head, 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 head piece on. Yo tratando de luchar con alguien. Imagínate. I learned a lot. Um, and the, it was the end of December, the end of winter break, and the coach was trying to teach me a new move, how to shoot in. And I shot in, and I put my hand in the wrong position, and right against his chest, and I broke my wrist. And I was, that was the first time I'd broken anything, so I thought I was about to die. I'm like, call the hospital, I'm dying. Oh my God, my mom is going to... I thought it was over for me. Um, and the track coach happened to be there. And he jokingly said, oh, now you can run track. Because he'd been trying to get me to run track since I showed up to the school. And I was like, no, nah, I play football, but I'm not running track. I'm playing baseball. He was like, all right. So he was excited. He thought it was funny. I didn't think it was funny. He said, now you can run track. I said, no, 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 no. I'm not running track. Eventually, went to the hospital, got a cast. They told me six weeks. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to play baseball. I wanted to do something. So I appeased him. I said, OK, I'll run track just this season. I was the slowest. When I say the slowest, I was the slowest sprinter. There, there was one girl. See, it would have been OK if I was the slowest and the eight or I think it was seven, seven guys that were just faster than me. There's the seven guys. But we had one girl that ran 13 flat in the 100. And I ran 13 one. And I was like, no, I'm slower than a girl. <laughs> and I thought I was the fastest in baseball. Let me tell you, baseball fast and track fast is real different. So, my ego, obviously, who doesn't have an ego? I'm a little boy, think I'm the man in baseball, just track, man, track, forget track. And then, like I said, my ego kicked in. I'm a competitive person. A lot of people are like, ha, 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 laughing, you lost to a girl, you need to go back to baseball, this, that, it's okay. I ran okay that year. Everyone here obviously knows you have to maintain a 2.0 or you can't play sports. Well, three out of three hurdlers got ineligible. Me being a team player and looking for an event that no one was in so I could maybe win and beat somebody, I decided, coach, I'll hurdle. I help the team. So I go out, it's like, good. There's hurdles, something to slow other people down. Maybe I could, I ran my first 300 hurdle race. I won. Not knowing, three years later, had I known, I might have not have chose the 300 hurdles. But no one told me at that time that the big boys run 400 hurdles. And I would have to train a lot harder to be good at the 400 hurdles, but that's a little later. 300 hurdles, I had some success in that. I don't know how. But I started winning. I was running junior varsity. I was in 10th grade. And I enjoyed it. The year was over. I clipped the last hurdle at league finals to go to the next round. I was in second. You had to get top three. I ended up seventh. And I had a choice to go back to baseball, which I knew I was good at, or prove everyone wrong that said I couldn't do track and field. I couldn't hurt them. I was too small. I was too skinny. I was too slow. I came back. Came back to track. Obviously, the rest is history. Never played another baseball game in my life. I wonder if I would have ever made it. But I didn't have a plan in high school. I was going year to year. I was thinking about college. 
I was thinking about, okay, when everyone graduates and you're a senior, what do you do from there? Why? Because no one in my family had ever went to college. So that was never even in my mind. As a junior, I started getting letters from college and universities from my coach, and I'm like, oh, okay. But I played it off like I knew what it was, and I just hid the letters under my bed. I didn't tell my mom about them. I didn't know, I didn't want her to get any, any expectations. Senior year comes around, and I was the kid that just did enough to get by. And at that time, you needed 11 core units to get into a major university. And I had 12. I was like, I'm good. And the counselor was like, maybe you want to take this um, other core class so you can have 13 because they may change the rule at the end of the next year. It's like, no, 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 I'm okay. That's, I want to take like, I think I took chorus and computer class. And I wanted my senior year to be easy. Um, I paid the price because they changed the rule. I ended up with 12 and I couldn't receive any of my scholarships because they changed the rule to thir you need 13. So I was one short. So then all my buddies that I told, ah, I'm gonna go to college, that were, didn't have the money or the talent to get a scholarship that ended up going to a junior college that I laughed at, like, <laughs> you're going to junior college, I'm going to university. In August, the end of August, I was right next to them at the junior college, trying to avoid everyone, disappointed, ashamed, because I had tried the whole time to just get by. Finally, I buckled down and I was like, okay, I need to take this seriously. I got a scholarship offer from USC and a few other schools. And I started thinking like, why don't I just apply myself? I applied myself and I started getting B's instead of C's and D's. And I was like, it's really not that hard if you stay on it. I'm a huge procrastinator, I had to learn not to procrastinate. I had to learn time management. I had to learn scheduling. I learned that mainly through junior college and track because you had to schedule your, your day, you had to schedule your lifting, you had to schedule uh, when you were gonna study. Going to class was different in college, especially in junior college. You go, they don't care if you show up or not. So now you're held accountable. So I'm going through junior college, end up barely making it through high school, finishing my degree in junior college, a two year bachelor's degree with 3.5. And I was like, man, this is easy. Then I got to USC and I was like, I'm in University of Southern California. This is hard. I, I'm blessed. I'm blessed que no me dieron esa beca después de high school porque yo me iba a devolver de una, de, de una vez because I wouldn't have made one year through a university with my study habits that I, that I had in high school. Junior college was the perfect bridge for me. Gracias a Dios. Started running. was number one in the nation. Again, I got caught up being too confident my junior year at the Nationals, I tried to jog the first 300 and was in fifth, and you had to get to the top two. I passed one person only. Y todo el mundo me estaba mirando y hablando, pero ese Félix Sánchez, él no, él no llegó al final. Él no, pasaron, él no pasó a la final. And I was like, oh my God, I let my team down, I let myself down. I should have won Nationals, and I didn't even make the final. This was 1990, I don't even want to tell you, 1997, nine, no, 1999, 1999, then two, two months later, they did a story on me, and somebody at the American public called my coach 
and asked, do you want to compete for the Dominican Republic? I said, absolutely. Because when I tried to find a contact, a track and field contact, in 1996, didn't exist. Once I finally got to the Dominican Republic, in 99, me di cuenta porque él no existía. Porque toda la pista era de tierra. There was no all-weather tracks like the one you guys have here that looks amazing, by the way. If there wasn't ice around it, I might think about going to work out, but no. Um, I was like, track and field is like dead here. Everyone was talking about baseball, basketball, boxing. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to change that. I didn't know I was going to change that. I also, I just had lofty dreams. I was always that kid that you could tell me I'm not going to do it, and I'll, I'll try it. And if I don't do it, I'll keep trying it. And I was, I was the kid in Xbox, we were playing Madden, and you beat me 99 times, and then the 100th time, I'm still thinking that I'm going to beat you, and I'm playing like, I'm, I got this. Not a chance. So, I go to the Pan American Games, 1999, Canada, represent the Dominican Republic for the first time. You get what? And then I felt like I, again, like not only did I let myself down, I let my country down because I didn't get a medal. The next year, 2000 Olympics. Boy, por fin, voy para los Juegos Olímpicos. Yo entro al estadio, está lleno, 120 mil personas. And I was like, <laughs> I mean, I was, in, I was used to running in front of crowds like this. So I get to the Olympic Games and I'm like, oh my God. Overwhelmed, wasn't ready. Mentally, physically, and that time it was in Australia, so the Olympics were like in October. Y yo empecé mi temporada en febrero. Yo estaba gatalla, y no tenía nada. ¿Qué yo iba a hacer? Llegué a los semifinales nada más. Y mi meta era llegar a la final. Y por la primera vez en mi vida, I set a goal and I didn't accomplish it. I wanted to quit. I was like, you know what, forget track. I'm going back to baseball. This is stupid. I went to the Olympics already. It's all right. A lot of McDonald's. A lot of McDonald's, free McDonald's. I was, oh yeah, salí de ahí como 10 pesos de más. I was eating it, and they had the, the fried apple pie. You guys don't even know about the fried apple pie. They don't sell those here in the States anymore. They had the fried, I had two fried apple pies for lunch, two for dinner. Oh yeah, yo estaba gozando allá. And I was looking in the paper on the internet, and un periódico dijo, Feli Sánchez echa agua fría. I lo deseo, or uh, something to the effect that I, me, single-handedly destroyed all the metal hopes for the Dominican Republic. And I was like, wow, que fuerte. Pero llevamos 26 tigres para allá. Tú lo vas a echar toda la culpa a mí. Está todo. The very next year, 2001. I finished, I graduated from university in 2000. I won nationals. 2001 was my first year pro. Had a bumpy start at the beginning, had a new coach. And I won my first world championships. The first world championship ever for Dominican Republic in athletics. And I was surprised. I didn't think I was gonna win. But I did. I was prepared, but I still had that doubt. Cross the line. And at that time, I was tied for number one in the world. I had about five races that I won, but they were small races. 
I go on to win every race after that for the next four years. I won in 2003 the Pan American Games in Santo Domingo. That was probably, other than last Olympics, the best moment because that was the first time that I got a chance to run in front of a Dominican crowd. I've run in Paris, I've run in London, I've run in Rome. I've, and I was a star in track and field. Oh, I am a star in track and field. But they, they cheered for me, but they wanted the local kid or the local countryman to win, obviously. They were, hap they were happy I was there, but they still didn't want. It was the first time I was resounding favorite. Everyone in the crowd wanted me to win. That came a lot of pressure. I was excited. I was nervous. I normally don't listen to music while I warm up. That day I had to. Oye, dame lo de difícil, porque yo no aguanto eso. It was, normalmente yo llego como tres horas antes de la competencia. Y era, Feliz Sánchez acaba de llegar. Feliz Sánchez ya está calentando. I was like, pero, déjame enfocarme. I put the headphones in, I zoned in, got into the track. It was the loudest. Tú sabes cómo somos. They se volvieron locos desde que yo entré. It was an amazing experience. Went on a month later to win my second world championships. Then the year after that was 2004. It was my chance to go to the Olympics again. I wasn't overwhelmed this time. I was, I was confident. I had been 40 some odd races, three and a half years, undefeated, haven't lost a race. Didn't come in with the fastest time, had a slight injury, but I still was confident. Crossed the line, actually won. I was excited, but you know, well, you'll, you'll learn. When you're young, you don't appreciate certain things. And I crossed the line, and I was like, yeah, I won the Olympics. Mm. I knew I was going to win. I've won everything else. You take it for granted. The very next, when I say the very next race, the very next race, 10 days later, I didn't finish the race. Strained my hamstring. The race, the beginning of the season, the next year, strain my calf. Mind you, I went 44 races, almost four years without losing a race. Let me say algo. Tú sabes lo difícil de todo el mundazo diciéndote, oye, loco, retírate, ya tú ganaste todo. ¿Por qué tú estás sufriendo, cogiendo lucha? Eight years before I won another race. That's tough mentally. Because you go to, to a level of confidence that you feel invincible. To a level of self-doubt that you don't even believe in yourself. You need your friends. You need your family. You need your coach. You need everyone. Because I stopped. I stopped believing. My coach was like, I'm like, yeah, coach, you're supposed to say that. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. My girlfriend, yeah, baby, okay. Thank you, thank you. I know you're supporting me because you're supposed to support me. I stopped believing. I've won so many medals. I have a big display case with medals. Yo entre un día. Yeah. I took every metal out that place and I put it in a plastic bag and I put the plastic bag in the, in the closet. I didn't want to see it. I was living in the past. I wasn't doing anything to prepare for the future. Yo estaba bebiendo, discoteca, dejé dieta, comiendo de noche, jack in a box, burgers, pizza, cerveza, todo, descuidándome. Porque yo me, yo me llevé de yo mismo. Ah, yo puedo. 
Yo, I got now. If I'm healthy, I win. And I kept getting injured. But why was I getting injured? Because I was overweight. I wasn't training. I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't doing all the things that got me there. I just figured that I had the talent and it was going to happen. But in reality, like in everything, you got to work for it. And como dicen, es fácil llegar, lo difícil es mantenerse. And that is so, so, so true. When I got to 2007, I got back on track, ended up getting silver at the World Championships. So I'm like, okay, going back to the Olympics, 2008, defend my title. I'm going to show the world that I still got it. El año entero tenía un dolor en el Aquiles. Barely could train, did not race. Yo no iba para los Juegos Olímpicos. Yo lo llamé a la gente de, de Dominicana y yo no voy para allá. Y el presidente del Comité Olímpico me dijo, oye, olvídate de todo eso. Nosotros queremos que tú llevas la bandera dominicana en the opening ceremonies. I was like, dang, I haven't done that yet. It's like, you know what, I'll go. Fuimos para allá. Three weeks early, pa' China, lejísimo. Lejísimo. <laughs> Comiendo comida. <laughs> Not the Chinese food you get around the corner, let me tell you. <laughs> Orange chicken. <laughs> Nah, that don't exist over there. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so we get over there. I'm training. My coach is like, hey, let's see. You don't, you don't, you don't feel pain anymore. Let's see if we can muster up a little shape and let's compete. I'm all right. Tu ya. So I'm preparing, I'm preparing, I'm preparing. I haven't told anyone that I'm going to run. I decide the night before we do a little training session. I feel good. Let's do it, coach. That morning, my family didn't know that I was going to compete, and they called me. Uh, it was 7 a.m., 7.30 something in the morning. Uh, se murió su abuela. And this is the woman that pretty much raised me all my life while my mom was working three jobs trying to support us. Eso se me tumbó, pero todo el ánimo. I had no desire to keep competing. Uh, I cried the whole day. I got up three hours before the race and decided, you know what? I'm just going to go out there and I'm going to run for her. Y yo entré al estadio vacío, 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 vacío. I had no desire to be there. I had no... I the tiger, nothing. And I ran and I felt like the stadium was empty and I just ran through the motions, crossed the line. And I got on my knees and I was just like, I spoke to her. And it was difficult because all my family was sufriendo. Yo solo, lejito, solo. And I didn't want to be there. I'm representing my country. I didn't do well doing that. I wanted to be back home with my family. Um, it was a very, probably the lowest point in my life. And I decided that I wasn't, I wasn't going to compete anymore. And I'm looking on YouTube. I wanted to see the race, how it went. Y yo oí un comentario diciendo que I think we've seen the last of Felix Sanchez. Just as I was crossing the finish line. And eso como me prendió un, un chin de fuego adentro. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to win one more race, one more medal for my grandmother before I retire. 2009 comes, no contracts. I don't know how, I'm, I'm going, depo no deposits, withdraw, withdraw, bank statement, withdraw, 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 savings is coming down. 
Um, luckily, I saved over the years. But I started realizing maybe I can't do this. Maybe I need a job. Maybe I need to stop running. But I remember the promise I made. I said, you know what? I'm going to do this for my grandmother. 2009 World Championships. I can say it like it was yesterday. I barely made it into the final. I had lane four right in the middle of the track. And for whatever reason, I smashed into the first hurdle, something I've never done in my career. Race is over. Boom. Came in last. Like, man, there was my chance. 2010, there's no championships. Se me salió una vaina ahí. Lo grabaron. Todo el mundo estaba hablando de eso. Después, oh, Sánchez dice, este es un. Yo digo, está bonito. And I was the first semifinal. So I was pumped because as I crossed the line, the second semifinal was set in their blocks. Y había cursen ahí. And I was like, let's go. He ran, he won his semifinal. We get a day off. And I was getting full of emotion because I was seeing mi meta acercando. I was seeing the results of my determination over the last four years, trying to win one more medal for my grandma. I had her picture in my room every time I would come in. Every time I saw a medal ceremony, I would, I would get all emotional just thinking about me being on the medal stand, getting a medal, finally. I remember we were walking out and they paused for the Ethiopia, I think it was Ethiopia. Uh, they had, she had won for, I think, the 3,000 or the 5,000. And I got emotional just thinking of the possibility of me getting a goal. And I was like, no, 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 no. Just, just get a medal, any medal. I don't know what happened from then to the next day. But when the final came, we were the, I think, third to last event. And when you get to the track of the warmer track of the Olympics, and you get there early, everybody's warming up. But when you're the last few events, it's just eight in an event. It's just a few. And you see everybody warming up. And yo vi a curso. Ellos no tenían que hablar como tres veces, calmándolo. Oye, loco, tú puedes, tú puedes. I was like, ese se jodió. <laughs> es por la presión. ¿Tú te imaginas? Y yo vi un video después que él tenía como una plaza ahí en Ponce o en San Juan, una pantalla grande. Y todos los puertorriqueños, ah, cusan, cusan. And I was like, wow. Now I understand his pressure. I felt the same pressure, but I have been dealing with that pressure for so many years, it didn't affect me anymore. But for him, they expected that gold medal. I know how that felt, because I've been there, and I've come through, and I've failed. So I didn't have that fear of what if, what if I do, what if I don't, because I knew if I did, it would be great. If I didn't, no one expected anything anyway. I was like, look, mamá dale. Whatever happens. I had the picture of my grandmother and myself, which I always kept after she passed in, in la cocina, because she loved to cook. And I put it abajo del mi número, and I hid it there. I wasn't sure on the rules if it was allowed to pin anything. I doubted it. So I was trying to hide it. I hid it the best of They didn't see it. That's the only, everyone was in there nervous, thinking about the race, thinking about, si voy a ganar, que tiempo voy a correr, el ritmo, la primera valla, la salida, y yo ahí preocupándome por la foto. I was like, please don't let them see this, folks. Please don't let them see. 
Cuando salimos del call room and no one saw the picture, I was like, okay, let's go. Put on my, my suit, put on my spikes. Y yo tenía como un paz. I was so calm that day. I don't know why. I just, I wasn't worried about winning anymore. Ran the race to perfection. Crossed the line. When I crossed the last hurdle, it was a, it was a surreal sensation because I know how I run and I know my competitors. I always study my competitors. So if I cross the finish line first, no one's going to pass me because most of my competitors run very hard at the beginning and they start dying at the end. And I, I run a little more paced race. So when I, I anticipated having to catch two or three of them. And when I passed them on the ninth hurdle and I was alone coming over the 10th hurdle, I was like, I'm about to win. I'm about to win. I couldn't believe it. Crucé la meta. Y oye, lo primero que yo vi, porque en los Juegos Olímpicos, hay el público, pero en la meta, hay todos los periodistas. And I was like, oh, y'all said I was not going to make the final. I was not going to make, get a medal. I was like, y ahora que? Dime que no. I was so pumped. And the first thing I thought, mi abuela. Saqué la foto. I went to my knees. And I had a personal moment. I kissed the picture. And I was like, we did it, abuelita. I think, because normally depending on when you run, depends on when you get your medal ceremony. I think, had I been one race later, had to do the medal ceremony the whole next day, I probably wouldn't have cried on the stand. But I was so lleno de emoción. Y cuando we were just lining up in the back to come out, I was ya mal, mal, pero mal. I was like. <laughs> Tratando de aguantarme. I was like, oye, tú tienes que estar así, orgulloso, proud, así, pecho arriba. And they gave the bronze medal, they gave the silver medal. I lost it. It started raining. And I felt at that time like it was just like my grandmother crying tears of joy. And I just, I got up. And you can see it on everybody. How are you? I went from 2004, oh, you're the Olympic champion, oh, you're the Dominican the Olympic, to the, oh my God, you made me cry. You were crying. I went to the crier on the podium. It was, it was difficult because I'm a very proud person. I'm not a crybaby. Um, but I got caught in a situation where I was, I was vulnerable, and I got on the podium, I got my medal, and I cried the whole national anthem. Eh, cuando vi los tres colores subiendo, eh, lloré de nuevo. And it was just a moment of when you want something so bad that you could just feel it in your gut, just the accomplishment and the joy you get accomplishing it. There's no, there's no feeling like it. And let me tell you guys, I'm going to end with this. Whatever you want to do, go for it. Pero sin miedo. Because tú te vas a encontrar con tigres, con mujeres, hasta tu mismo familia, que te van a decir que no, que tú no puedes, que tú vas a eso, olvídate de eso. If it's, if it's a desire and it's a passion that you have, nunca, nunca te rinde. Don't listen to people who've never accomplished what you want to accomplish. Because they just hate you. 
Don't listen to people who haven't accomplished what you want to accomplish. Because they're talking from an experience. You have another hand that, that have been there. And if no one's ever done it, be the first. And when people tell you that you can't, no one's done it before, you say, yeah, they said that about going to the moon too. You gotta believe in yourself. And by the time you guys are done with college, I think it's safe to say that Spanish will be, if not the main language in the United States, Ay, mimo, por ahí. Oye, de verdad. Aprovechanse. Tenemos ventaja ya. Por fin. You guys stay connected to your roots. And as Dominican Americans, as Dominican Americans, as Latin Americans, don't forget about your roots. Don't forget about the struggles that your parents went through to get you here to have a better life. When you have an opportunity, go back, give back, motivate others because we need it. Somos una cultura medio chismoso. De verdad, vamos a dejar eso. Vamos a apoyar a uno más. Man, I'm so glad. You just, you just don't want to... I never thought I would be in this position ever when I was your age. I'm so blessed to be... I'm, I'm in Lawrence. Lawrence. Thank you very much. Gracias, gracias, gracias. We got a little surprise for you guys, by the way. All right, give it up for two-time gold medalist, Felix Sanchez. Thank you.